sodium hydroxide goes into the liquid, and I need to have something available to stir it. And when it does that, it heats up really fast. And so it gets really hot, and it turns this horrible murky color because it's doing things to the suspended particles. So if I want to see, it is actually sort of dissolving. I don't know if you can see that there are particles floating around. So I have to stir this till it's finished dissolving. And how it's dissolving, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually steam coming off. It heated up so much so quickly. So at one point, we've got this is the sodium hydroxide in liquid. And it is now degrees, just a, somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees. That's what you call an exothermic reaction. That means that it's releasing so much energy it actually, um, as the sodium hydroxide breaks down in the water and ionizes, it releases a whole lot of energy and heats the water up. So what we have there is an extremely basic solution and it is outgassing. So I actually keep it next to a window so there's nice fresh air coming in because it's pretty unpleasant to smell. I don't know if it's... You certainly want to do this with lots of ventilation. Meanwhile, the oils are heating up over here. And what we need to do is get the oils and the sodium hydroxide to come to the same temperature or thereabouts. So we need the oils to heat up and the sodium hydroxide to cool down at the rate that eventually they're between 120 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. So we're going to wait for a while. That usually takes about a half an hour or so for everything to come to the right temperature. The temperature is 140 degrees and it's the same temperature uh, for the oils, which I checked with this a moment ago. Um, I kind of. <laughs> I will show you actually. I've found that the the amount of variation, um, as long as they're sort of average out to the 140 degrees and they're pretty close, that'll work. But there. Okay, so now is when the magic occurs. And I'm going to get somebody else to come and hold the camera for a minute to show while I pour. You know, this is where I've been putting everything with the sodium hydroxide on it. Stir this so that it's a uniform solution so that, that those um, herb extracts are equally distributed through the whole thing. And then watch the clock because this is magic. Pour. And it starts to turn things from oil into soap. And the process is called saponification. You watch this, the color of it will change and it gets cloudier and cloudier. And I stir back and forth with sort of a figure There's a bit of a splash, so this is why I'm wearing a, a uh, lab coat. Picked up for $4 at the local thrift store, by the way. So this process now the saponification process um, takes about eh, 25 to 45 minutes depending on what's going on. So I'm not going to film it for 45 minutes while I stand here and stir. But that's what I'm going to be doing for the next 45 minutes is standing here and stirring. And when it starts to get, um, it sort of looks like this for about the first oh, half hour or so. Where it starts, it's getting a little thicker. I don't know if you can tell that it's not stirring like a liquid so much anymore. It's starting to look a little bit more like a um, if you're stirring maple syrup or something. But as it goes through its chemical process and more and more of it is turned into soap, you start to be able to see lines on the t surface. And that's called tracing. And when it comes to trace, I will record that process and then I will record as we pour it into the mold. 
Um, but I'm going to stand here for the next half hour.